Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your trusted weather source here, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Tuesday, April 1st, 2025. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this edition here. Is yeah, great. We've got some more severe weather, not only for today, but for the next five days, we're gonna have to deal with this and we'll break it down here for you in some greater detail. And no fooling, and I ain't an April 1st joke, we're talking about a polar vortex invasion big time uh, pattern change going into the second week of April with below normal temperatures for a big portion of the eastern portion of the United States. And then we're also going to give you an update on the climate outlook because of this big pattern change that we're expected coming into the, the later into the month. Now, before we get going first, I want to say a very special thank you to all the new subscribers here on the channel. Great to see us growing and moving in the right direction. And if you haven't yet decided to join us just yet, please hit that subscribe button in that lower right hand corner. Hit the notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, if you appreciate this report, please leave me a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate you guys' help. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the big picture here across the country. You got one exiting storm system off the eastern seaboard. Yep, we got some snows. Yeah, we still got winter weather up here in the Dakotas. We'll show you that in a little bit. Some rains down here into our air portions of Kansas as well. And we got another storm system coming in here on the west coast here. You see the low pressure here coming into areas of Oregon as well. Now, let's look at the big picture here from coast to coast. Again, we're expecting a lot of heavy rain here across the country. There's a reason for this. We're going to have an area of high pressure kind of camping off the the southeastern coast. It's going to be blocking everything, so all the weather patterns going to be kind of going over the same ground. Breezy, windy, got some red flag warnings here. Here's our winter storm up here, and we could be seeing some significant snows up this way. We'll break that down for you as well, and some snows out here in the west, a little breezy in Southern California. All right, so let's look at the big picture here. We're quiet in the east for right now, but the big firing zone is going to be into this area here later this afternoon, kind of going into Oklahoma and Kansas, and then it'll shift off toward the east going into tomorrow. So again, we got winter storm, we got severe weather, we got a little bit of everything coming at you here for this report. Let's go ahead and shove into this area here. We'll take a look at some of the snow up into the Sioux Falls area, getting some pretty good snows here that'll be kind of moving up toward the north, eventually dumping some very serious snows up into areas of Minnesota. We're talking areas getting close to a foot of snow. I'm going to show you those totals here in just a second. But the other big part of the big story for this week is going to be the severe weather. we got several days of it ahead for us for today. So let's go ahead and break this down. We'll start with today first, and we're going to break down today and tomorrow, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the rest of the week as well. So again, here we're looking at your enhanced area for severe weather. Our target zone is going to be Kansas and into Oklahoma. Definitely could see some supercell thunderstorms there that could uh, dump some uh, potential tornadoes with this. Let's go ahead and break this down for you here as we look at the tornado risk. I'm running about 10% in that pocket. Uh, again, we're going to have to watch that very closely. The, the high resolution model, which I'll show you in a second, definitely hinting at some sort of a supercell development in there, that's for sure. And then we go ahead and look at your wind break, uh, breakdown here. Again, running about 15%, very large area there, uh, kind of coming from Missouri into southern Iowa, all the way back in here toward Texas. Uh, gusty winds, excess of 60 miles per hour, perhaps even higher in some instances. That's a possibility as well. And then obviously we're looking at a hill uh, corridor there, a big bullseye there in the red across Kansas and Oklahoma, especially where we could potentially see those supercells erupt heading into tonight. All right, let's look at your day two. This is going to shift off toward the east for your day two outlook here. This shifts over this way. It looks very similar to what we saw here on Sunday. Uh, an enhanced risk here from Michigan, uh, stretching all the way back in here toward east Texas, Ar uh, Arkansas, uh, obviously uh, Kentucky and, and Tennessee into this once again. And these storms are going to be training over the same ground. So there's definitely a flooding potential in there as well. We'll break that down for you here in a second. Again, the tornado risk running pretty high, much higher than we saw in the last one, I believe. They're definitely seeing a higher risk here with yellow uh, area there running about 10%. I think we'll see more tornadoes with this system compared to the last one we just saw. Looking at the wind threat here, again, running about 30% there in the red, obviously. Uh, uh, areas around Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh, getting back over toward Oklahoma, over Oklahoma, well not Oklahoma, in Arkansas and in Tennessee. Uh, those areas seeing a high risk there for some very gusty winds. And obviously we'll have some hail with this as well. Significant hail looking at there in the red, again, co covering all the way back into East Texas in there. So that basically right in that enhanced corridor, we're going to be seeing a uh, risk for strong gusty winds. Uh, obviously some tornadoes and things like that. A very significant outbreak potential going into tomorrow. Now, day three. This will not move that much. Again, we're expecting an area of high pressure that's going to be anchored here off the eastern seaboard. That front system just cannot move, so it's going to be dumping some more thunderstorms and heavy rains in that same corridor going into day three. And it really does not change that much. Look at the day four. Again, sitting over that same ground. So the flooding threat for this week is going to be significant there. 
about the look at day four and then day five still kind of sitting there across areas of the southeast. We will begin to see things change this weekend as a significant pattern change moves in. And the severe weather after this week, folks, looks like it takes a little bit of a break here for about a week as we see the, the polar vortex. And I want to show you that here is going to make a drop down here into the United States. So again, I want to highlight the fact that we do going to have an excessive rainfall threat here. We'll look over the next three days and it'll go beyond the three days as well. But there for today, you're seeing just the margin risk there. Obviously, with the thunderstorms we're expecting for today, uh, into that zone. Check out the day two, becomes a little more significant. I got the moderate risk there uh, running from Indiana all the way back into, uh, into Arkansas. We definitely could see some flooding, especially in those, those flood prone areas that's going into tomorrow. So going into your Wednesday and then going into Thursday doesn't change all that much. So again, I'm really concerned about the flooding here across portions of the Ohio River Valley coming back in toward Arkansas and Tennessee for this week. So if you're in a flood prone area, please pay attention this week. I think flooding in those rivers and creeks are going to come up significantly with these big time thunderstorms kind of training in over the ground over and over again. And this goes even beyond this going into the three to seven day outlook, three to seven day outlook going out day three and on beyond the seven day. Again, look at the flooding risk, heavy thunderstorm risk covering the same areas there uh, going into this upcoming weekend. So please stay weather aware and pay attention to your local uh, National Weather Service offices uh, as the flooding threat as well as the severe weather threat is going to be there big time with us here over the next several days. All right, so let's go ahead and break this down. What, Why exactly are we seeing we're going to see here? Let's break all this down and kind of show you uh, again what we're expecting here over the next few over the next few days. Let me go ahead and pull this up over here. Pull me up. There I am. Uh, and we're going to break this down. So here we go. Let's go ahead and talk about this here. We're looking at the 500 millibar winds here. We got a pretty significant trough here, uh, digging here across across the southwest and kicking out into the plains. So is this trough, we're seeing a pretty good wind shear. So you got the changing winds with heights that's coming up in here. So you got a changing winds with heights uh, coming right through there. So that is uh, quite significant. And uh, that is the wind shear element of this. If you're always looking at different components of severe weather outbreaks, you're looking for wind shear and you're also looking for instability and heat. So we're definitely gonna see that here over the next few days. But what's interesting about this, as I take this forward, check out this big ridge of high pressure here, uh, sitting right off the, off the southeast coast. So again, you got this deepening trough here out in the west and the storm systems just can't move. So the same area is gonna be kind of inundated with uh, storms after storms after storms as these little impulses kind of kick on out. And that holds right into this weekend. So we got several days of this storm systems kind of going over the same ground. Now, as we go towards Saturday, you're going to notice this feature up here. This is the remnants of the polar vortex is going to break down and it's going to set up shop here going in from, say, like the, the 7th and 8th and going right into the middle of the month. Check this out. As that kicks on out, we get the first initial outbreak here across areas of New England uh, going in toward the 7th and 8th, and it'll be followed by yet another one. There'll be several of these kind of dumping into place. Here's the, here's the next one. So again, with this pattern change like this, we're going to shut down severe weather season here for a little while. I think we're going to see probably a week of inactivity. I'm sure the storm chasers won't appreciate that, but they're going to, that's what we're going to be seeing here. So we get that one big dump there and then another dump coming in toward the 15th. And it just kind of sits there uh, for, say, the, they say the 7th through the 15th. Looks like that's really going to shut things down here across the country and kind of dry things out. But in the meantime, this week, it's going to be feast or famine. Boy, we're going to get feast this week and it's going to be famine going into the following week. Now let's go ahead and talk about this upcoming severe. We know we got plenty of dynamics there. So we got the wind energy, got the wind shear that's gonna be there. So let's talk about the instability for the storms here for tonight. So the storms here for tonight, uh, again, we're seeing some pretty good instability here coming up. So we got, uh, this, is, this is heat, this is energy. Uh, gonna steal these thunderstorms here across portions of Kansas and Oklahoma. That's that. So we know we got wind shear, showed you that. And I also showed you we got instability there for those storms. Now, these are going to press off toward the east. Notice that the, the instability pushes off toward the east. So for going into Wednesday, going into the next day where that enhanced area is, we're going to have to obviously see fuel for the thunderstorms there as well. So we're going to have instability and we're going to have obviously the wind shear that's going to be there. Much more wind shear for this system as compared to what we saw on Sunday. Okay, so a big change there as far as how these two systems differ from one another. All right, so let's go ahead and break this down. Let's look at the high resolution model here. We're going to look at when the storms are expected to erupt. Watch that timestamp in the upper right hand corner here as we take this forward here. Again, looking forward, there's that initial supercell right there. Shows up a big one right there uh, going up toward eight, nine o'clock here for tonight. You've seen the thunderstorms erupting up here toward the north as well. 
Uh, can't, can't ignore the winter storm of this element as well. We're going to see significant snows there up to the top. I'm going to show you the snow totals here in a second. Uh, but again, looking at the severe weather, we've got a couple supercells here breaking out ahead of that main line. And that's where the best tornado risk is going to be out ahead of that squall line uh, going into the overnight hours. So we're talking about a nighttime uh, severe weather event here for this for tonight going in from Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And then this squall line will push off toward the east going into Wednesday morning, going to Kansas and into Missouri. All right, so you're going to have this squall line setting up here uh, going into Wednesday morning, and then it's going to push off toward the east. And with that daytime heating and that instability that's there and the wind shear, we'll have to deal with some more severe weather as this goes into Wednesday evening. This pushes off toward the east. Again, we're going to be watching this rain training over the same ground. We'll be looking at the risk for severe weather and th uh, tornadoes possibility in there as well, going in throughout the day into Wednesday and going into uh, Thursday morning. And again, that again, that it's not going to push off to the east that much once it gets to right about there because of that big ridge of high pressure that's going to be setting up there across that area. So let's talk about the tornado parameters. Again, this is what the tornado parameters does. does it looks at the looks at the helicity, looks at cape, it looks at all the different variables and says, okay, where is the best zone for tornadoes? Okay, and this is very high. Check this out. This gets very high here across southern Kansas. Again, we were, we were seeing a couple of supercells erupting there, and the, the tornado parameter is through the roof. So we can see a very significant, uh, strong tornado possibility with this, especially here uh, for late today and going into tonight. We could see a significant, I'm talking a big boy, maybe like an EF3 or above uh, with, that, with this kind of setup. So that is for tonight. Now, this pushes off toward the east, obviously, as we go into the early morning hours, and then we look toward tomorrow. Uh, going into Wednesday, uh, looking at this, I mean, this is a pretty significant, you got these thunderstorms and you're seeing a much higher level there of seeing some of these uh, tornadoes back through here uh, with that boundary setting up through there. So the tornado risk is definitely higher, like say across Western Kentucky, Western Tennessee, especially Southern Indiana, Illinois. The target zone we were looking at on, on Sunday for comparison was much, much lower. The, the parameters running about about four or five. These are running 11, 13, 10, much, much higher in here. So real concerned about the tornado threat through here as we go into Wednesday night and into Thursday morning. So those are our two events that we're going to be watching closely. Again, we got that enhanced risk, as you just see there, uh, coming in here for your uh, Wednesday, Thursday time period. All right, so let's look at the European model. We're going to take this all the way out here as we kind of watch this uh, evolution of these storm systems. So we got this one first. Coming east, so we got the one that obviously showed what's going to go on for tonight across Kansas, Oklahoma. This pushes off toward the east going in toward your Thursday morning, and it's just going to sit there. It's The rain is going to continue to fall over the same ground here over and over again, over again, here again, uh, going into this weekend. Look at this. Got some snow down here doing the Texas panhandle. Uh, they're they're going to have summer and winter in Texas in, in the same day on Saturday. I, they'll probably have temperatures down here in South Texas in the 90s. And we're going to have snow up in the panhandle. So uh, very interesting dynamic there. Now, this will push to the east. Now, remember, we're watching that big pattern change. So look at this cold dump. I mean, this is significant. This is pretty cold, man. We're talking snow, feeling very much like wintertime across the Great Lakes. These heights are crashing as that initial polar vortex. And here's part of it right here. Across southern Canada, what's left of the polar vortex starts to break down, which is typical in the springtime, and it charges down toward the south and really sets it up for a very cold winter-like day here across the northeast going into the 7th and 8th, and that's that initial shot. Remember, we got another one coming in right behind it. It breaks down. Here's another one. Uh, you see the 540 line here now down here coming into Alabama and Georgia. So folks like in North Georgia, I know I got a lot of folks from North Georgia to watch. I wouldn't be planning anything right now, especially up in the Georgia mountains. I think we're going to see another frost with this uh, again. And then you see this load here just gets spun up yet again. The 540 line sitting right through here. Snow across the Great Lakes. Very winter-like here going toward the middle of April, 15th of April. And we're dealing with snow across the Great Lakes. Just amazing to see. And it looks like we'll, that'll linger for about a week. And then the pattern change should happen again as we go into the 15th. Beyond the 15th, like severe weather season will kick back up. But for about a week, the storm chasers are going to get a bit of a break uh, the way it's looking right now. So let's go look at your rainfall totals. This is where it's going to be excessive here. This is your seven-day total in here from the Ohio River Valley back into Arkansas. Very heavy uh, uh, rainfall amounts are expected into this area. Uh, let's go ahead into the east here. I'll go in a little bit closer, kind of highlight some of these areas here. You're looking at the seven-day totals here. I see eight inches, six inches, seven inches, six inches, and that may be underdone. Uh, typically, in my experience, when I see this kind of set up in the past, they, they, the, the models tend to underestimate the rainfall total. So it could be quite significant here across the Ohio River Valley, stretching back in toward Arkansas, 
as we go into this next seven days, especially with the pattern where these storms are stuck and they're training over the same area. Okay, so that is the, the, this part of the storm. The another part of the storm is the winter part of the storm. And uh, boy, we're talking the areas here. This is the high plains. This is what we're going to see on the short term. So this is this next 48 to 72 hours here. So, so check this out. I mean, wow. Very impressive. Looking at uh, 10 inches of snow. There's a 12 inch right there. Uh, quite significant across portions of Minnesota and the Dakotas here with this winter storm coming in here. That's the winter storm warnings. I just showed you they have up that way. That's going to continue here over the next uh, next three days. So it looks like it really gets going here for today. Moves up into Minnesota and into Wednesday. Just continues there throughout the way of Wednesday. And that, that should be about it. So about the next 60 hours or so uh, with that snow total in there. And then as we look at the national picture, I'm going to show you the national here. Uh, again, we're going to be dealing with, oops, let's go a little bit closer than that. There you go. And take this beyond this. Again, we got that snow across the Great Lakes. Remember, we got that polar vortex jumping down here again. Yeah, there it goes. Some more heavy snows across the UP of Michigan here and across uh, uh, the lower portion of Michigan as well. And look at that. Hey, a little snow here showing up even into the Appalachians into April. That's something you do not see very often. That is for sure with this polar invasion that's going to be coming down. So let's go ahead and wrap things up here. We'll look at the climate outlook here, kind of show you the big change that's coming. And boy, when this came out yesterday, it really got people buzzing. But warm here in the West. Cold here in the east, a big flip-flop coming our way. Remember, we've been dealing with the cold in the west and mild here in the east. That's going to change. This is from the 6th through the 10th and from the 8th to the 14th. Very cold. Temperatures probably running some 20 degrees below normal here in the east. Very warm here in the west. Now, with the pattern change coming, we're also going to shut the precipitation down. Look at the dry conditions here across a big part of the country, except for the southeast, at least from the 6th to the 10th. And then it gets even more pronounced. <laughs> Check that out. From coast to coast, below normal precipitation here. Like I said, for this period from the 8th to the 14th, the storm chasers are going to be twiddling their thumbs here. And we're going to get a little bit of a chance of, of a break. But for the next five days, count them five days, we're going to have to deal with this uh, severe weather threat here over multiple days ahead. So uh, get ready and get prepared for that. It's going to be an active week here for severe weather. So you guys make sure you keep uh, keep yourself safe and uh, attuned to what's going on in your area, especially those areas that could be looking at flooding conditions here for this upcoming week. So please pay attention to that as well. We are planning on doing some severe weather coverage on that. Again, look for the postings in the Times uh, to be posted on that. And if you'd like to be notified, best way I can tell you, my friend, is please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, if you appreciate the support, please leave me a comment down below and share it with your friends. We'd like to invite as many folks as we can here to the Weather Nerds channel. All right, that's y'all's update for now. You guys take it easy, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.